Hello everyone, today I'd like to talk about sadness. Um, sadness is something that we've all felt in our lives, something that's very human. Of course, we know these things. Now, sadness can take on, can take on extreme forms. It can take on uh, depression if one has a chemical imbalance or depression because one has circumstances which are very difficult to deal with. Uh, but there are certain roots and certain branches of sadness that we should all take into account and learn from. Now, uh, what I have here is a dry erase board, of course, but the cause of sadness, uh, the, the main cause, uh, no matter what your circumstance, is the unwillingness to accept, accept circumstances. Now, even if your circumstances are not your fault, everything that's happened to you is terrible and it's not your fault. An unwillingness to accept the circumstances it, is what makes us unhappy. Now, people can feel pain. They can feel fear. They can feel um, just complete disappointment and unapproval of their situation. And that is a, a reaction. But um, an unwillingness to accept our circumstances is what makes us sad, is what perpetuates the problem into something that continues further than the, uh, the genuine reaction from uh, us being human. Um, sadness is a perpetuation of um, the unwillingness to accept circumstances and what the situations we find ourselves in. So that is the cause of sadness. But sadness, like I said, has roots and branches. Now, I'm going to break down a few of these so that we can better understand what sadness is and how we can learn uh, to, to work with sadness in a better way, to accept it and then learn from it so that we don't have a life that is controlled by it, that we don't feel completely helpless when we are in a situation where our circumstances are terrible and we don't want to accept them. All right, so the first, uh, the first route that I've written down here is inactivity towards happiness. Uh, now, inactivity towards happiness is, um, and I've had a lot of experience with this, is that you don't work towards your goals. You don't define your goals and you don't work towards them because either you didn't define them or you haven't summoned the willpower to work towards them. And a lot of the time, uh, for people who are in uh, impoverished situations, you just simply don't have very many resources to work towards uh, your goals. Uh, and achieving your goals and essentially in society as we understand it, uh, not looking at it from a spiritual aspect, uh, achieving your goals helps you towards happiness. That is how you achieve happiness through working out of uh, this, the lesser situation you find yourself in, whatever that is. Um, this may seem a very uh, rest, restless societal attribute, but this is how our society operates around the world if you're working purely in society and not in spirituality, which is what I'm talking about right now. Um, and inactivity towards happiness, the, that is the root. Uh, for this one, and uh, the branch is a lack of options to achieve what one wants, like I said. Um, you you simply don't have the options when you're not willing to exert enough will, when you don't have enough will, when you're not willing to even build will uh, to exert. Um, and you can do that through meditation, you can do that through daily affirmation, you can do that through doing one little step at a time. Uh, if you want to be a bodybuilder, work out a little bit here, a little bit there, and then work up. If you want to be an accountant, um, start taking a class. Uh, if you can't afford more than one class, start taking one class. Uh, start reading books about accounting. Uh, you can even go to a library and get those books. Um, but really, all these steps that I'm mentioning as far as achieving these goals, you have to you have to decide within yourself to do something before you do it. Otherwise, uh, all these little little steps aren't going to mean anything. And and once you decide something within yourself that you're going to do something, you'll find everything falls into place much easier because if you have any hesitation about what your goals are or how you're going to work towards your own happiness and you really don't know what you want and you ha you have to decide what you want first if you don't ha if you don't know what you want uh, and you have doubts about your efforts then your efforts are going to be cut at least by 50% uh, because half of your half of yourself is pulling away, and half of yourself wants to do this because you you uh, kind of think you want to do it. But if you decide absolutely and sh assuredly that you want to do something, please work yourself into a place where you can make that decision and then go for it and go towards your goal. Because otherwise, you're going to have a lack of options uh, to achieve what you want because you're not going to have the full heart dedicated to what 
you want, what you've decided. So make the decision. Work towards it. Um, the second one is lack of knowledge about factors. Factors uh, relating to one's sadness. Uh, the factors that are inhibiting you. And uh, these factors... These factors aren't something we immediately know about when we're born. Uh, a lot of the time we don't know why we're sad. We don't know, we don't know why our spirit, our, our person feels afflicted um, by uh, a feeling of weakness or inadequacy or um, just basically a lack of happiness. A lot of the time we don't know. So we have to do research. We have to start thinking about why uh, we're in the situation that we're in. We feel the way that we feel. And a lot of the time you want to study uh, different psychological texts. You want to study uh, just different uh, information on the internet as far as why people usually feel sad. If it's a chemical imbalance, if uh, it's your lack of a relationship to society that you feel attunement with it. Uh, or a lot of the time, like it is with me, uh, but not nearly as much as the other two, is that um, you don't feel motivated by the goals in society uh, that most other people are motivated by. You aren't motivated to uh, achieve great money, to gr achieve a great job, to further yourself in the business world, further yourself in uh, a commercialized job, uh, because you feel a calling to something higher. And that's, that's something that I've felt, and it's not going to be the majority of people, but when you feel a call to something higher that is outside of what society values at this time, then that's that beckons you to study spirituality and religion in whatever way you feel fit, uh, whatever way you think uh, you should. And maybe some of the ways that you think you shouldn't. Maybe you should go outside of what your society and your family and your town, your city, your state, your country uh, feels is acceptable. Go outside of it. Find your happiness in the liberation that works the best with your um, psychological structure. Now. We're going to go ahead and go to the, uh, and the lack of knowledge about how to be happy goes with the lack of knowledge about factors because you simply don't know how to be happy if you don't know the factors attributing to your sadness. But we're going to go to number three and uh, coping methods for sadness uh, become our only happiness. Uh, eventually, and, you know, I've been an addict, I've been an alcoholic, I'm still an alcoholic um, by my own definition, not necessarily by AA or anything like that. But um, basically... When you have coping methods to deal with your sadness, when you smoke cigarettes, when you, uh, when you maybe even if you go to the gym, uh, you shouldn't rely on that too much. It's good for you, but you shouldn't rely on it too much. Uh, if you drink too much, if you use drugs too much, if you um, even if it's societal things like bullying somebody or looking down on people or uh, yelling at somebody or um, uh, mistreating your family members or uh, through physical abuse or uh, psychological abuse. Or if it's even coping, coping methods like listening to too much music and not doing other things, fairly harmless ones like that. When you become reliant on your coping methods, your coping methods become your only happiness. And when your coping methods become your only happiness, you lose perspective on what happiness really is. You lose perspective on, you lose perspective on uh, what you can be when you're happy. And... Um, that goes to the next one, but reliance on uh, coping methods form habits and addictions, and that's still number three here uh, as a branch of coping methods for sadness become our only happiness. Um, when, a, when a coping method becomes habitual or an addiction, which are kind of the same thing, uh, habits and addictions are hard to get out of. Addictions for obvious reasons because you feel physically addicted, but also maybe psychologically addicted. But habits of any kind are hard to get out of because they're formed behaviors that you perform regardless of if you choose to perform them. You kind of fall into that if you're not conscious of what you're doing at that time, at every time. If you're not conscious of your ability to choose, you won't be able to work your way out of a habit. And uh, that's why habits are so dangerous because when you fall into them, uh, if you don't become aware of your situation, then you're going to keep on going down the same rut day after day after day after day. Uh, maybe even a minute after minute if it's negative self-talk. And um, habits are one of the most terrible parts of sadness because when we start tearing ourselves down mentally, when we start misunderstanding uh, our situation and thus blaming ourselves for it or lashing out at other people even mentally, let alone physically, um, then uh, our whole outlook on life and what life is and what humanity is and what reality is becomes 
skewed by these habits, becomes uh, broken down in a negative way by our habits. And now the last one is we lose sight of who we are, uh, who we were when we were happy, like I said. And uh, and then the branch of that root is sadness rules our lives. When we lose sight of who we were when we were happy, what happiness is, we start to think, okay, may, I wasn't happy then. I've always been like this. I've always been sad in this way. Uh, and for these reasons, you you forget how you felt when you were joyous, when you were free from the sadness, when you were when you were happy. You forget what you were, how you felt at that time, and you get so attached to your coping methods or your current state of sadness that there is the the memory, uh, the memories that you had, the good memories, they start fading. You only remember the bad memories. And this has happened to me too. Uh, I remember so many more bad memories than good memories because of my depression. And the depression is a combination of chemical imbalance and, you know, these factors still affecting me. This is why I, this is how I've come up with these factors. I didn't take them from everybody. These are factors that affect me directly. And this is me trying to understand them and trying to share them with you so that maybe you can understand your own. Um, but we should always believe that happiness is possible and that we can be in a greater state of contentment than we are. Never forget that. Never forget that and always strive to escape from these chains of sadness. And, you know, when sad and then the branch of when we lose sight of what we were when we were happy is sadness rules our lives, uh, becomes who we are, becomes the only reality we know. And if it's the only reality that we know, then, then reality itself doesn't seem worth living in. And then that's when you want to die. You might want to kill yourself. You might want to hurt yourself. You might just hate others and want to hurt other people. When sadness rules your life, there's no upward slope from it if you if you let it rule your life. If you allow it to completely warp the way you look at the world, if you allow sadness to uh, say how bad you are, or how bad how other how bad other people are, or inflict your ego in a way that does that makes you do these things uh, mentally or uh, or even uh, verbally, uh, talking down to people, talking down to yourself uh, verbally, even when you're talking to yourself and um if you if you allow that to happen then sadness is taken hold to an extent that it'll be very difficult to break through but it's always possible to break off those chains to break off that self-talk to break off that talk towards others to break off the ideology and philosophy of sadness about how every, everything's bad everything's terrible and it's not able, and you're not able to get out of it um it's always possible to get out of to get out of that state of mind and it is vital that you do so by the things that I've talked about, uh, working towards your own happiness uh, through setting goals, even small ones, taking them one step at a time, uh, gaining knowledge about what depression, sadness, it and sadness is, uh, why and how it affects people. Research online, uh, get some books, um, and realize what your coping methods are, and try to limit your reliance on them. Now, coping methods aren't always bad. Listening to too much music. That's not that's not bad. Uh, it's bad if it if it becomes such an, a habit and addiction addiction and a coping method to where you listen to so much music you can't get anything else accomplished. That's when it becomes bad. But so many other coping methods are, of course, much more detrimental to our health, uh, psychologically and physically. So uh, gain some insight about your own coping coping methods. Look at yourself and um, try to look beyond. Coping methods being your only only relief, uh, whether it's a whether it's a drug or it's a habit or it's going shopping, uh, listening to too much music, um, cleaning even cleaning too much when you do it overly and it, it becomes uh, basically the the main thing that you do in your free time. Even over cleaning, uh, something that is virtuous if you if it's taken in the right amount. Um, these can be coping methods that we rely upon too much, and they can be, become our only happiness when we're not willing to really focus on what happiness is ourselves, why we're not happy, and we just continuously and habitually uh, participate in these coping methods. And never lose sight of the ability to be happy um, beyond and to a greater extent than you are. Reality isn't so bad. Look up, believe that it can get better, and believing it can get better is the first step. Then you slowly take one little step after another until you're out of the pain, until you're out of the sadness. And then you can be, you can be free. 
you might sink back in, but then you go right back out. And then you can experience joy and happiness again. I've been to a depressed state to the point where years back where I couldn't speak and I literally couldn't get off the ground. So I have felt this sadness and depression to a very big extent. Uh, and I was addicted to a few things on top of that. Uh, that wasn't the only cause of why I was sad and depressed, but uh, one of the causes. So there's many factors leading me not be able to really speak a lot or get off the get off the floor. Um, so I do know a little bit about this. I have a little bit of history with this, and uh, take my word for it. Sadness is your enemy. You have to overcome it. You have to fight back. One little step after another. One strike after another. So I hope you've learned something from this. If you like this video, free, feel free to hit that thumbs up down there. And uh, I'd love for you to comment. We can exchange ideas. But uh, I hope you all have a great day and always look up.